Hi boys and girls, today I am going to show you how I made my animal diorama and give you a couple tips of what you can do um, and ideas when you're making yours. So hopefully you've already done all your animal research um, and filled out your graphic organizer um, or at least done it in your notebook with your animal's body, your animal's habitat, the food your animal eats, your animal's um, life cycle and fun facts. So those were the five things that you were supposed to research last week. Um, all of those um, writing portions should be submitted through Edsby um, from last week. And don't forget that it's okay if it's a kindergarten level writing. So even if it's hard for you to write sentences, you can draw pictures, label, and try your best to write a sentence about what you learned. So this does not have to be a formal report um, that looks like, you know, a fourth grader did it or a middle schooler did it. Make sure that it's your work and I will be able to tell um, if it's something that you really did. And I would be really proud of you if you just try your best to do your work. Um, all right, so after you're done with your project, you should be working on or your, your writing part, you should be working on your diorama. And your diorama should be also something that is fun for you. So what I did is I just started getting whatever art supplies I had around my house. If you don't have art supplies around your house, maybe you could just use regular paper and crayons and color. Um, I know I use construction paper. I also use some tissue paper from um, that I found from some uh, old presents that we had around the house. Um, I also just, um, if I needed a different color, I used, um, that I didn't have, I used um, a white piece of paper with some crayons and I colored it. So what I did is I took a shoe box and, it, and as you can see, I took the bottom of the shoe box and the lid of the shoe box and I made this like L shape. And, and then I covered the bottom first with green for my ground. Then I covered the back blue for my sky. Um, also, if you want to just paint the box, if you have paint at your house, that, that's another option of a way that you could do it. You could paint the bottom or if you have felt or fabric, that would work too. Um, then I thought about my animal's habitat. So I was doing the giant panda, which lives in the mountains in China. So I knew that I needed to have some um, mountains in my um, diorama. The mountains in all the pictures that I saw were green because they were all covered in trees. So instead of making brown mountains or gray mountains, I just cut out white paper and then I colored them green, like they have trees on them. Um, then on the bottom, I made sure that I put some water for my panda bear, even though they don't really swim in the water, but they would need some water to drink. So I made a little river. Um, you could make a river or a pond or a lake or the ocean for your animal to go in. So be creative. Maybe you could look up um, even on the internet, on Google Images or on Pinterest, moms and dads, to get some ideas of some household items that you could use. I've seen before people use tinfoil, saran, saran wrap, um, like I said, tissue paper, um, cardboard boxes. Um, also for my tree, I used a toilet paper roll. So you can kind of see in there, I, um, I put a toilet paper roll up and then I put a piece of paper in front of it to make the tree stand up. And then this is just green tissue paper that I just stuck in the top of the, the toilet paper roll. Then to make my bamboo, uh, my animal eats bamboo, so I had to put a lot of that in there for my animal to eat. I just took some green tissue paper and I just twisted it up to make these vines. So if you have a rainforest animal, you could make some vines and then I glued some little leaves that I cut out of construction paper. 
All right, so I, um, oh, and I went ahead and put a sun in there with just some yellow construction paper and some clouds with tissue paper. And then I put some grass along the front just to make it kind of look more 3D and kind of stick out a little bit. Um, you could do grass here, you could do grass there. Um, it's really nice in a diorama for it to kind of look 3D like it's not flat. So the more things that, that you have that stick up or stick out, um, the better. Also, um, I didn't have a chance, but my neighbor actually has a bamboo tree in her backyard. And sometimes her tree goes over to our yard and we're able to, um, to cut some of it down. And I had thought about getting some real bamboo and putting it in here, but I just haven't had a chance yet. And now it's too wet outside because it's raining. Um, but that's another option. If your animal eats um, a lot of plants or if your animal makes a nest out of twigs, you, you could use real leaves or real twigs um, or real sand in your diorama if you don't have all the, all the materials. So since I don't have a real panda bear, like a pla or obviously I don't have a real panda bear, but I don't have a panda bear like toy or plastic um, figurine, and I didn't want to buy one because I don't really need one of those. I just printed out some pictures of a panda bear. So to put in my diorama, you can do that or you can try to draw your animal on a sheet of paper and then stick it in your diorama. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make him look 3D. So I took a piece of um, cardstock or you could use cardboard. You want it to be a little bit thicker than a normal sheet of paper and I cut it in a strip and I folded it like a triangle. And now this part is going to be where I glue my hand of air to. Let's see, I'm gonna turn it around a little bit so I can do it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here on this flat part. Then I'm going to glue my hand of picture and to find this picture I just searched real panda bear clip art and I saved it to a word document and then I printed it out so you can probably have somebody help you do that all right so now it looks like a little stand so now when I glue it in my diorama it will look like my panda bear standing up instead of just him stuck to the back or instead of him um, just laying on the ground and then if I put glue on the bottom, then the bottom part will be glued into my diorama and it will look like he's walking in there. If you were doing this, you might want to wait a little bit in between to let it dry, but I'm just doing it all right now so you can see me. All right, so now it looks like he's, and I can kind of push it back a little bit if I want to make it exactly like I like it. And now it looks like he's walking in my habitat. And I actually printed another one too that I was gonna stick over here by the tree of my panda, of this panda eating. So um, that's it boys and girls. Parents, please don't stress too much about it. Normally um, when we do this um, at school, I let the kids do it in class. So just think about that. If this was a project that was normally happening in kindergarten, they would be doing this in class all by themselves. And then I normally would circulate and just help them do a few things. Like I would help them figure out how to get their tree to stand up, or I would um, print the pictures out, and then I would help them you know, to make the, the little 3D um, stand. But if you just show them how to do some of these things, show them how to cut the grass or how to crinkle the, the, the paper up or how to color it, um, you might wanna just let them do a lot of it on their own. So like I said, it's okay if it's kindergarten level work, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece, okay? Um, so, all right, I hope that that was helpful. Um, try your best. Don't forget that these are due on Friday at the latest. So on Wednesday, I'm going to start doing Zoom meetings where you can come and show us your diorama if you're ready. Um, this took me, um, with stopping with breaks in between, taking care of Ford, this took me maybe about an hour to work on, but I've done it before and I kind of gathered all the materials that, that I wanted to use ahead of time. 
So it shouldn't take you too many um, days to work on it once you get started. So um, if you have any questions or if you need any ideas, I am more than willing to help. Um, this is a project I normally do every year, so I, um, I might have some tricks for making some of your animals' habitats, for making a nest or making a tree or making a bush or whatever you're trying to make. So if you need help, let me know um, and have fun. Try your best. Have a good time and I can't wait to see what you make.